I, I want us to read from the book of Matthew chapter number 24. The, 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 the other theme for this message would be working as a as a fire servant. Uh, this is my message, and this is a message that needs to be aligned in my Amen. Amen. It's more of a rebuke, but I bless God. Uh, I'm going to read a long verse because it's Bible exposition service. The Bible says Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its building. Do you see all these things? He asked, I tell you the truth. Not one stone here will be left on another, everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they say, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ. Uh, the name Christ means I am the anointed, amen? And will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of war. Are we hearing them right now? Russia, ISIS and all that. So does that confirm that we are living in this age? I love this Bible. And the Bible says, uh, uh, rumors of war, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. They must happen. Meaning that we don't pray against prophecy, but we pray in line of prophecy. They will happen, but they will not affect us because we are not of this kingdom. Amen. Amen. So when you pray, you pray with a confidence knowing they will happen to the world, but not in my world. When Al Shabaab are killing people, you are not the target. Amen. Yeah. They can kill whoever they want to kill. But our kingdom is a different kingdom. We are here for an assignment, and no one can terminate you. Even your boss cannot fire you unless God wants you to be fired. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, and the Bible says that these things must happen, but, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. You see, there's a difference between nations and kingdoms. Amen. You need to understand, nations will rise against nations. What are we seeing today in the church? Kingdoms are rising against kingdoms. The church is rising against the church. Amen. There will be famine and earthquake in various places. All these are the beginning of the bad things. Meaning that nothing has happened. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. I can preach this one right here and change your prayer into praise. Because Christians have not been trained to overcome. They have been trained to expect things will never happen to them because there is a lot of motivation and less of revelation. So nobody ever told you that Jesus called you into fire. This is war. He said that brought a sword. I'm separating you from your family. So meaning that it is not a place where you sit and stay comfortable. Uh -huh. More so in these last days. It's going to be fire for fire. Because the devil is assembling his army and Jesus is assembling the body. So let me not lie to you, you will be targeted, you will be persecuted, you will be rejected, but in all these your faith will increase. So don't be afraid of warfare. We are living in a time of war, spiritually and even physically. Listen, I'm put to death and will be hated by all nations because of me. But then from all your is like Facebook on a scale the counter from here. You will be hated. And this does not sound like the gospel. When you stand in righteousness, you will be hated. When you don't entertain corruption, you will be hated. When you don't entertain uh, unrighteous living, you will be hated. But it is the world who will hate you. But I want to introduce you to the other side. God will be smiling. Amen. Amen. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many will turn away. The true test of a firm believer is when there is a shaking. The true test of a relationship is conflict. Uh, for those who are married, they know. The true test of maturity is conflict. There is a lot of theory thinking, but less practical thinking. People are theoretically correct, but they are practically wrong. Why? Conflict. 
me, it brings out the real person. It brings out personality. You will only know a dog is a dog when you step on its tail that is conflict. It will bark even though you are feeding it. You will know the maturity of a Christian when they say, Spokoni me okoka. <laughs> so I thank God for conflict and I thank God for harsh places because they prove my maturity. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Amen. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Why will they turn away from the faith? Because when things get hard, not, very, not everyone stands the heat. It is only those who are born of the heat that can stand the heat. <laughs> Only those born of the fire that will stand the fire. And the Bible says, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. I want you to analyze the word the false and prophet. Meaning that they will operate in the prophetic. They will prophesy like the prophet of God. But they will be false. Not because they don't have the anointing, but because they don't have the direction. <laughs> And many will appear and deceive. Are we not seeing this on our television? Are we not seeing this on our telly? Where it is the 25 minutes deliverance and 5 minutes testimony. Not even preaching. I'm not saying it's hard to give. Even after this service will collect them. <laughs> but I'm saying, if prophecy is not in line with the scripture, it is not prophecy. If I prophesy to you and fail to quote the word, those are good words. Because the Bible says, He follows His word to fulfill, not my word, His word. So if I'm giving you a prophetic word, I will give you a scripture that you'll start on. So when you petition God, you will have something to use. <laughs> because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. The love. Why? Because of the increase of what? Wickedness. I want you to see. What will they say? But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. I release the standing anointing. Amen. We shall be enabled to stand to the end. No amount of pressure will shake us from our faith. Now listen to what the Bible says. But And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. As a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand that this is a mystery. We can teach of Daniel for a whole year. Daniel saw these things. He saw these signs. He even gave accurate prophecy on time. Okay, who's taking in? Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get the cloth. How dreadful it will be those days for. Pregnant women and nursing mothers, pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For them, there will be great distress, and equal from the beginning of the world, until now, and never to be equal again. Oh, if you're not born again, you better get born again today. This is what the Bible says. Uh, if those days had not been cut short, no one would have survived. But for the sake of the elect, that's another mystery. Elect. Who are the elect? You are the elect. You didn't choose Jesus, He chose you. You went out the gospel and received. Many rejected it, but you received. I know there is a doctrine of pre, uh, predestination. That tries to justify the elect, but that, that is too much theology. Let us just read the word as it is. At the time, everyone says to you, look here is the Christ, or there he is. Do not believe. I want you not to concentrate here. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect. But if that were possible, hallelujah, the elect cannot be deceived because the elect is the bride of Jesus, born of the word of God. They are not moved by miracles, they are moved by revelation. You can raise the dead, but if there is no revelation, we are not men of sight, we are men of faith. So it is not about the miracle, it is about the miracle.
on watching God. Now, when I read verse 24, I saw something that moved my eye. And I started asking myself, we will live in an age that miracles will not be rare. But we will live in an age where fruits will be rare. Meaning that we are living in an age where the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Ghost are not rare. But we are living in an era where the fruits of the Spirit are rare. Meaning that if you are not grounded, you will be deceived. Because many churches are founded on the gifts of the Spirit, but not the fruits of the Spirit. I am not saying it is bad. Because the gifts are in two levels. There is the gifts for ministry that is according to Ephesians 4, 9 to verse 11. That to some he came to be apostle. Some he came to be preacher, teacher, evangelist. And also some he came to be teachers. And these are the fivefold gifts of the ministry that are given to the church. So that the body of Christ can be perfected and raised to maturity. Meaning that if the gifts of ministry are not functioning, then the body is going to be affected. But I want to submit to you, there are two key ministries that justify the survival of a church. The first one is the prophetic and the apostolic. And if there are offices that have been abused in this nation are the apostolic and the prophetic because in Ephesians they lay the foundation of the church meaning that the devil knows when the foundation is right then the building is okay and he is in the business of messing the foundation of the apostolic church but I came to declare there is another level that we are rising it is not a level of deception but a level of revelation even though they try to shake when any time the devil rises, you better know that something I did is about to happen. And when any time the counterfeit comes, be prepared for the original. Because he can sense in the spiritual world what is about to happen. Every ministry that has gimmicks, uh, everything that is deceiving my generation, they are either under the prophetic or under the apostolic. The gifts will not be rare. But the fruit will be rare. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And I want to mention the kids. And maybe try to separate them in different categories so that you can understand. There are nine kids of the Spirit. And there are nine fruit. Not fruit. Fruit. That is another mystery. Nine fruit of the Spirit. English is difficult and limited. When it comes to interpretation of the Bible. Are you get what I'm saying? So in the gifts, gifts are many. And, 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 and when you read in the Bible, First Corinthians 12, 1, I know that's not a scripture for that. Do you know the Bible is a position of an answer? Do maturity? This story of Kukishia was being a bear, was being charming. Look at your level. Look at your level of good, he's a good guy. Look at your level of relationship with my life. Look at your level. <laughs> I'm writing to you because your baby is in the thing. Because you are like, a I'm to you strong and overcame the devil. And my chief, the devil is not afraid of muscles, he's afraid of revelation. You are strong in the world, you have matured in the things of God. You can have church experience and this maturity. You can be 10 years old in the church and still a baby. Come on. In the faith. And you can be one year but breathing fire. It is not a game of experience. It is a game of encounter. Now about spiritual kids. Brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you are pagans, somehow or other, you are influenced and led astray to mute idols. Mute. They don't talk. Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus be cast and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of working but the same God works them all. 
Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one that is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge or word of knowledge, by means of the same Spirit to another faith, by the same Spirit gifts of healing, gifts of miracle, prophecy, and speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, and all these are the works of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. Who determines? God. Now I want to take you to the Old Testament and show you an old concept of how you can function in the gift out of the order of God. The Bible says the gifts of God are without repentance. Now God responds to four things. He functions under principles, covenants, sacrifices, and relationships. He operates under four things principles, covenants, sacrifices, and relationships. That is another mystery for another day. So that tells you you can keep on coming. <laughs> Amen. Now, what is a principle? A principle is a function that changes results. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 1 minus 1 equals 2. 1 times 1 equals 2. What affects the results? It is the function, the principle. Meaning that if you apply a principle knowingly or unknowingly, you will get results. Are you getting it? And the meaning that if you walk in revelation, whether you know or not, you can get spiritual results. But it is not a confirmation that God is with you. For you to attract the Holy Ghost, you activate. The Bible says the soul joined prophets and he prophesied. Because there was an environment that arrested his spirit and he got connected to the moment. But that does not mean he was a prophet. And there are many kids functioning prematurely because men entered an environment and they manifested. The Bible says there was a prophet by the name of Bala. He was a false prophet. Even though he was a prophet, he started as a prophet of God, but he was attracted by money. And the Bible says that time came and he was called by Balak in Numbers 23 and Numbers 24. And the Bible says he was paid to cast the Israelites. And the Bible says he went and he used a spiritual principle. He raised the seven altars. He knew if I raise an altar, the presence must come down. Let me tell you, there are many people using church principles principle and they are moving masses but God is not in them God is in his principle because when he raised an altar the fire came down but the Bible says when he raised his staff to cast the people he was directed to bless them because the Bible says I have exalted my work above my titles and he said I have blessed your seed O ye Abraham blessed is the seed of your voice and he said that because they are blessed no one can cast them. And so even though he exalted an altar and activated the realms and there was a spiritual manifestation, God did not go against his word. There are many churches operating on principle. They know when the worship is right. They know when the environment is right. They can sense the presence of God. And they operate in manipulation. And I came to tell you, shift from the kingdom and start connecting with the fruits of the Spirit. You could be living in a dead church. It is not about the miracles only. It has to be beyond the miracles. It has to be laid under the revelation of the name and the, the word of God. Then, I mean, Samson knew who he was. And all he needed to do is go and activate the anointing. And he went and fought and succeeded and went back to his mess. Can I tell you what? You can master the art of spirituality, but you are dead in your spirit. You can function. I see this review you given to me. We can preach powerfully and live a backslidden life. At least seven. That's why the Bible says they will come saying, Master, 
We serve in your name. The issue was not with the gift. The issue was with the fruit. Because I'm not a God died to the gift. I'm a God died to the fruit. I don't care what you do. Because what happened is, the reason why you sang is because there was no one else to sing. And so since the faith of the people was active, I used you to manifest to my people. So it has nothing to do with you. And it breaks my heart when I see men writing, come and see what happens in our church. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the faith that was projected. And because there was a man on the altar, God decided to use the man. And that is why he will say, depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Even in your healing, even in your deliverance, even in your singing, even in your raising the dead, I used you. Working as a hired servant. Fired servant. This is my message. Now, listen. They are what we call the gifts of revelation. The gifts of revelation. We have the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. Those are gifts of revelation. They are the most abused, but you never function in those gifts if they are not connected to the Holy Ghost. Word of knowledge is, is a divine understanding of happenings in someone's life. It, most of the times, it, 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 it speaks about the past. They will say something happened to you when you are this and this. It is one of knowledge. Knowledge about your past. And it, it tries to explain why things are happening to you now. Most of the times, what of knowledge creates awareness. What follows is what of wisdom. Because wisdom sorts knowledge. Because what of wisdom has something to do with the correction of the word of knowledge and it has something to do with solutions to word of knowledge and it has something to do with what to do next in the future. And these are gifts that are instant. I can look at you and get a word of knowledge in my spirit and release it to you. It is not prophecy. It is a word that has to do with you. That is why they are called the gifts of revelation. Discerning of spirits is a gift of revelation. There are times you sit with people, they start a conversation, you go to a church, they start preaching and you walk out, you don't connect. Because if the spirit of God is in you, it will always tell you where he is not found. Yes. And so sometimes you talk to people and you can feel deception. Have you ever sat in a meeting and you disconnect? Men of God, sometimes you are called in a meeting and you don't feel your spirit resonating. And you're like, yes, they have called me, but I don't feel like going to that meeting. And if you insist you go to it and find it was a messed up meeting, you preach from the head, not the spirit, because there is no connection. This man, this one can even operate in your business. People talk of deals and you meet that guy, and two minutes are enough to know whether to strike a deal or not. You go to a job and they keep on sacrificing, they use blood to make it. You walk inside and your spirit is suffocated and you say, good money but the wrong job. Keeps <laughs> of revelation. They don't just function when you're eating Uganda and sleeping. These ones function when your spirit is alive, activated. Sometimes you walk with the people, uh, uh, there's a guy called the Mosh. Sometimes people serve you. Kwa Udeni, unawana wetu na mambia koda na niambia one, two, three. And even pray with them. I remember there's a time when Johnny was operating in one of knowledge. I had this story, and he shared with a sister. And she looked at her and she was like, Where are you? I don't know my child. Because it is accurate and it is real. I can be your it. Well, as if you. Then there is what we call the gifts of edification. We have tongues, interpretation of tongues. And prophecy. Tongues. What do tongues do? They edify you. Anytime you don't feel like praying, enter the closet. Start by praying in tongues. You will feel like praying. Prayer is not a feeling, it is a mandate. You will never feel like praying. Let me say, you will never. 
There is no one day you let wake up and say, don't ask you to walk no. But you have to activate the inner man. How? You start in the morning at four when you're sleeping. Mahida bo shataba. Lekra bo. But for that, minda baze kete. You activate, you edify the inner man. If this was a game of feelings, all ladies will not be born again. <laughs> they will put swing to prayers. <laughs> Another step for me, too good. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. And that is why Paul does not really uh, speak about the tongues. He says, in fact, I speak in tongues more than you. Because he understands the power of tongues. But again, tongues should not be used to it- intimidate people who are not speaking in there. Because there are people, when they come to church, they think tongues is the evidence of being spiritual. And so they burst in tongues in a manner to intimidate the person next to them. You can speak in tongues and the spirit is not in you. Why the spirit can leave and leave you with the tongue. <laughs> GBC gave a very good example. And he said he was walking with his father. And he saw it spinning. Then he decided to plug the fan from the source. And it was still spinning. Even though it was disconnected from the source. Yeah. You can continue spinning, but you are disconnected from the source. So don't intimidate me with tongues. Intimidate me with fruits. Yeah. Amen. He yeah. don't feel me. <laughs> I get word of knowledge. <laughs> Amen. There is the interpretation of tongues. I desire that we shall enter this land. That we will not just speak in tongues, but some of us will be filled with a divine hearing. And they will hear the things we utter, the mysteries in the spiritual world. And I desire that you shall speak in unique tongues. Not like the ones that you have. I went to churches and the pastor speaks in a tongue and everyone speaks in that tongue. But I desire that you shall speak in Chinese. Another one will speak in French. A Kikuyu will speak in Kikamba. Why? Because the Bible says when they were there, they spoke in a language that when they were outside there, they had them. The people of the nations. Meaning that you can shift. Today you can speak China, tomorrow Japanese. You don't know what you're saying, but you're praying in a new tongue. So don't fake them if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Desire and receive the real ones. That when you pray, they will be real and active. So we have to judge a contact at a Uta Itana, Nakuna Tina have any matter to not tell them. We must get in. Interpretation of terms, amen. The other one is prophecy. I'm saying this are things of edification. Tongues edify you, interpretation edify the body. Prophecy, there is a difference between a prophet and the gift of prophecy. Because a prophet is an office, and the fivefold, but they all gifts, and the fivefold, the gifts in the church. Then, a uh, prophecy, it's a gift that you can speak about the future. And most of the times when you're operating in the gift of prophecy, you deliver the prophecy. But the office of prophets has two functions. You can be a prophet who delivers the message and who delivers the message and delivers the people. Elijah delivered a message and he also delivered the people by the message he delivered. Meaning that you don't just speak, but you speak for one function. Most of the time, the prophetic anointing will allow you to have the two. Praise the name of Jesus. But the gift of prophecy, you just announce you speak things about the future and they come to happen. Amen. About the, the others which are called the gifts of power. <laughs> we have miracle, gift of faith, and gift of healing. Is it your own offense? Let us hope God my power. Is it your operate now? So, when operating in a mega church, now is the abuse when operating in our transformation. Do not know what you do, but we will move you. What has it been? Amen. But the problem with the church today in Kenya is not miracles, it is lack of faith. So that much it happened, one to a million of us So they have been 
hivi kwa mwezi wa kila kitu why because they need something to go home wone ili kitu nimeshika nimeenda nayo kwa hao nimepatia mapepo they don't believe in the name of jesus demons cannot stand in you don't need a proof in the name of jesus because you carry jesus in you he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world they overcame the devil by the testimony of their mouth and the blood of jesus you testify who you are sababu kata kwa nani ya kuna level ile ya kutinga demons unawafunzia Unaanza kusiambia I am born of God. He that cast you out of heaven lives in me. And you know it. Amen. So one one of the things is I, I want to touch briefly on the gift of faith. Because there is the gift of faith, the fruit of faith. Uh, and, and they are spoken of a mocha there are three types of faith three types there is the saving faith there is the saving faith that we shall not boast of our works according to Ephesians but it is because of the faith that is Ephesians 2:8-9 by faith you are saved not by works lest anyone should boast this is the faith that justifies you The name justification means just as if I never seen. So it is the faith that makes you just as if you never seen. And this faith is not even of you. This faith is brought by the Holy Ghost who convicts your spirit, releases the faith and then allows you to get born again. What is it? The mystery of salvation is a mystery. And so there is also the fruit of faith. The fruit of faith produces faithfulness. Because when you live in God and have this faith and this fruit of faith is irrigated by the word. It grows when the word grows in you. So the more word you have, the more faith increases. Amen. So it is a product of it is the faith the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. So this is the faith that is irrigated by revelation. Are we together? Yeah. And so it cannot be survive and it can grow as you grow in the word. This faith has three dimensions. The fruit of faith. It has the dimension of believing God can do, God will do and God has already done. And those dimension describes the three types of believer. A baby a child and a mature believer are you getting it kuna 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 mungu anaweza mungu atafanya mungu ashafanya those are levels of maturity hata kwa maombi yao tutasikia kusema hivi baba kama ni mapenzi yako mbonye kuna ndio nasema father it is your will because by your stripes you are here i believe in it and all those are prayers but in different levels of faith now the gift of faith is a supernatural faith it is the faith that comes upon you in the midst of impossibility the faith that was upon Shadrach Meshach and Abednego when they said even though he does not deliver us take us to the fire the faith that was upon Daniel when he was taken to the tomb of lions it is the faith that believes for the supernatural and this faith comes after your kind of faith has gone I was reading the book by Stephen because he said the first person he raised from the dead she prayed for the guy and when his faith was over there was a certain faith that came to him and he took that lady akamweka kwa ukuta akamwambia walk again walk again but his natural faith could not propel him to that level if I remember was when he was praying the wife was telling him hey, amen <laughs> but now another thing took over a supernatural impartation that allowed him to beat the dead and spoke and that woman lived it is a supernatural encounter with your spirit man now this faith this faith when it connects with another faith miracles are born 
And also the gift of miracle is natural. Whether you have faith or not, I'm operating in that. So I can manifest that gift. Most of the people that Jesus healed were not even born again. But he raised their faith and then healed them because he operated with the gift of faith and he had the miraculous gift. Because the Holy Ghost dwelt in him fully. What else you Now let me break down the gifts. The gifts, I mean the fruit, the spirit, the fruit. The fruit. One of the things is that according to John 15, chapter 1, we are grafted into Jesus. He is the true vine and we are the branches. Now let me tell you, you will never see a fruit on the trunk. The fruit is always on the branches. Meaning that we are attached to the source of life. But we tap the life and we are the ones that produce fruit. And that scripture, if I may read because it's important, uh, John 15, chapter number 1. I want you to see what the master does to increase productivity. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. God is not the branches. He is the gardener. He is in charge of the vine. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Remember, not fruit, fruit. Ah. While every branch that does not bear fruit, he proves so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And so there is no way that we can operate in the dimension of the fruit if we don't remain planted to the true vine. Now when we are planted to the vine, then this is where we produce the fruit of the Holy Ghost. Because then the, 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 we tap from the power of the vine. And then we tap the power, the ability, and then Jesus is the one who dresses the vineyard. He knows what to cut off and what to retain. And sometimes the cutting off process is not the easiest process. He has to cut off some relationships because you have to produce fruit of purity. And he has to separate you, disconnect you because there are things that cannot stay connected to Jesus and allow you to produce fruit. Meaning that there is no way we can live a fruitful life without us staying connected to the source. Meaning that the life of a Christian, what God is looking for is not miracle signs and wonders. He's looking for the fruit that a believer is releasing. Why are they called the fruit? Because when the fruit is in you, it operates in nine different dimensions. It is one fruit operating in nine different dimensions. And these fruits again have different capacities. Uh, let me read to you before I finish because it is very important. There is the fruit of love. The fruit of joy, the fruit of peace, and these are the inner experiences of the Holy Ghost abounding in us. They exercise personal relationship. When you walk with Jesus, you must walk in love. The Bible says, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Have you ever known many people don't love themselves? It is impossible to love your neighbor. The love you show yourself is the love you will project. And the Bible says, If he lives in you, then the peace of the Lord must be in you. Then it finishes and says uh, that I came out there the fruit of joy. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, meaning that the joy is different from happiness. When you have a thousand, you are happy. When you have ten bob and you are smiling, that is what I call joy. When your house has been locked and you can still go for a cash and lift your heart and tell your master you are worthy, that is the joy of the Lord. It does not need an environment, but the joy creates the environment. Ah, happiness is a product of environment, but joy grows and changes the environment. When you have the Holy Ghost, they cannot understand. When you are fired, but you are smiling, because you know that my God will never leave me. The joy of the Lord becomes my strength. And there is no day that I will need strength if I'm not in a place of weakness. Strength is a product of weakness. Meaning that when strength comes, I'm in a place 
place where weakness is inevitable. But because I experienced something in me, the evidence of the Holy Ghost, then I produce the joy. When I walk in the prayer closet, I am not complaining. I am joyful in my spirit. The second dimension is a dimension that allows us to be related to men. This is the gift of long suffering, the fruit of gentleness, and the fruit of goodness. Long suffering means that you have the ability to endure. You have the capacity to be patient. These ones connect us with men because men can fail you, but somehow you are patient. Because let me tell you, patient does not mean waiting. Patient does not mean waiting. Patient means understanding the promise because you know your hope is not in men, but you understand the promise. So it gives you the capacity of long enduring. In the process of long enduring, you are producing goodness. When men expect you to abuse them because they stay with your money, you are telling them, brother, the day you get the money, pay me. I'm not in a hurry. The day you get the money, pay me. When brothers expect you not to talk to them because they messed you up, you go and tell them, I bless you. I have no place in my heart to house any grudges. It's called the gift of goodness. If you exercise this fruit, let me tell you, the world will be changed. You will not struggle to tell them you are a believer. They will see the fruit and they will know you are connected to the vine. Let me tell you, the fruit does not announce itself. It is visible when the branches are cut off. We need to start producing the fruit. And the Bible says there are other fruits that are a product of a relationship with our God. We have the fruit of faith, the fruit of meekness, and the fruit of temperance. When we walk in faith, we can we will be faithful. When we walk in meekness, the Bible says, Blessed are the meek. There is a blessing for the meek. When you connect with God, then the nine dimensions of the Holy Ghost will function in you. I don't want to be part of a church that is functioning the gift alone. I want to be part of a church, a movement that is operating with the fruit of the Holy Ghost, where love is the language of the day. The Bible says, in the last days, the love of many will grow cold, meaning that miracles will not be a problem. It is the fruit of love, and the love surpasses everything. When you 